Taurosaurus, which means perforated lizard, a reference to the large openings on its frill, is a genus of herbivorous chasmosaurine ceratopsian dinosaur that lived during the late Maastrichtian age of the late Cretaceous period. That would have been between 68 and 66 million years ago, but it's possible they could have lived as far back as 69 million years ago. Fossils from this animal have been discovered as far north as Saskatchewan and as far south of Texas. So yes, they were all over North America. And despite a cursory similarity, they are not to be confused with their cousins, the Triceratops, which are also Ceratopsians and are definitely very closely related. After all, they look quite similar. Or perhaps too similar. Hmm. See, it's possible and has been proposed that these two dinosaurs are actually one and the same with Triceratops actually being a juvenile version of Taurosaurus, as they did share the same habitat, lived at roughly the same time, and the only major difference between the animals was the frill. Taurosaurus had the holes, whereas Triceratops doesn't, and not a single Taurosaurus juvenile has ever been found, but a number of Triceratops juveniles have. In 2009, John Scanella, concluded that the situation could be best explained by the hypothesis that Triceratops and Taurosaurus were simply growth stages of the same genus, with Taurosaurus being a fully mature individuals of Triceratops, and they'd both be effectively be called Triceratops as Taurosaurus was named after. Plus, Triceratops is far more famous. In 2010, Scanella worked with Jack Horner, the destroyer of all happiness when it comes to dinosaur fans. And together they published research on the growth patterns in 38 skull specimens, 29 of Triceratops and 9 of Taurosaurus, from the Hell Creek Formation. Their conclusion was that Taurosaurus indeed should represent the mature form of Triceratops. And Horner personally stressed the frill of Ceratopsian skulls consisted of metaplastic bone. And the characteristic of that is that it can lengthen and shorten over time, extending and resorbing to form new shapes. Approximately 50% of all subadult Triceratops have two thin areas in the frill that correspond with the placement of the holes in Taurosaurus skull frills, which in their case are surrounded by mature granular bone, suggesting that the holes were developed to offset the weight caused by the larger frill. And if you just look at it that way, it does somewhat make sense, but this theory has been met with quite a bit of resistance from the paleontological community as a whole. Not everyone agrees with Scanella and Horner regarding their findings, and their theory isn't perfect, it actually does have some flaws. For one thing, if Taurosaurus were the standard last maturation phase of Triceratops, it would be logically expected that Taurosaurus fossils would be rather common as fossils go. Generally speaking, if you look at other dinosaur fossils, it's fairly understood that the vast majority of what they find are mature adults, as their skeletons were sturdy enough to be preserved without the earth being overly gentle with them, and the earth rarely is. Juveniles, especially babies, are really hard to find and are comparatively rare. So if Taurosaurus was the final version of Triceratops, largely there should be way more remains of them, when in reality, there's a ton of Triceratops, but not that many Taurosaurus. Horner and Scanella counter this point by pointing out the high mortality rate of subadults, and the possibility that old animals preferentially lived on heights where erosion prevented fossilization, which, um... Okay, look, that just sounds like kind of an excuse to me. I mean, I will likely never know nearly as much about paleontology as Dr. Horner or Scanella. I am in no way going to pretend that I have an expert opinion when compared to these highly educated individuals, and I want to stress that. But, this logic goes against literally every other dinosaur species we have remains of. In nature, yeah, there is a high mortality of subadults. That's a, that's actually pretty common knowledge. But we still don't find that many remains of them, even with such a high mortality. We still find mostly adults. And they must have known that, which is why they mentioned the heights issue. Which... Okay, why would that be that... 
What are you basing that off of is kind of my question. And that wasn't the only issue with the theory. Another problem was the size range of actual identified Tarasaurus specimens, which on their own actually suggest the existence of authentic Tarasaurus sub-adults, not just Triceratops. Scanella and Horner countered that by saying that that was simply individual variation. Another objection involved the lack of transitional forms between individuals, with and without those holes. They used specimen USNM2412, which is a holotype of a rather contentious genus known as Netoceratops, as an example of a transitional form. But the last problem with the theory involved the number of osteoderms on the frill edge. In Triceratops, there are generally five, including a midline osteoderm. But Taurosaurus, there are 10 or 12, and no midline. Also, the number of episquamosals on the side edge of the frill differs. Five with Triceratops, six or seven with Taurosaurus. That was also explained with the idea that they would increase during maturation, which, great, but we are dealing with a lot of, um, assumptions here. Other experts in the field have denied that the theory is probable. It's possible, but not probable. It was actually directly challenged in a 2011 paper by Andrew Fark, and another 2012 paper by Nicholas Laundrich. And the whole debate kind of spiraled out of control from there, and is still ongoing to this day with other issues being pointed out when it comes to Horner and Scanella's theory. For example, another problem is that while the habitat range of both Taurosaurus and Triceratops is similar, it is not identical. They didn't necessarily live in the exact same place, but their territories would have overlapped. And it is commonly accepted that they were very, very, very closely related, but the exact same thing? It seems that these days, most paleontologists don't believe that that is the case, but it could be the case. I guess the real question is, what do you guys think? Do you think Tarasaurus is just the final maturation of Triceratops, or are these two separate species that just happen to be remarkably similar? Feel free to let me know down in the comments. I'm interested in your thoughts. And with that, a special thank you goes out to all my apex predators. By all, I mean all three of you! I still love how short these lists are compared to History in the Dark. Arthur Roy, Dr. Racer78, and Metal for Life Guy. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.